Okay, because I inadvertently watched a YouTube channel where somebody had a percolating coffee pot, I, of course, had to go get one. And after rigorously reading the instructions on the propane tank, the base, the cooktop, and that, the knobs are over here, the vent is going out that way, and it's setting on a granite countertop inside a house with the back door open. So, there it is. Okay, there it is, she's a spitting. This is awesome. I don't know why it drills me so, but it does. Look at that. That's where it's at right there. I guess as it gets darker in that little top part, you know it's done. Or after you've boiled all the water out of the thing. So there it is. It's a, a work of art. Amaze balls. The next morning, excuse my uh, kind of hoarse sound. I'm trying to talk quietly. It's oh dark 30. Um, some of the things that I've learned from this experience is um, this produces a totally different flavor of coffee than that. Okay. Um, are both of them drinkable? Absolutely. Um, this puts an old school flavor on the coffee. And I believe it develops the coffee flavor more fully because it's actually boiling water and it's can, over several minutes. It takes a lot more time. It's um, a lot more labor intensive. Uh, I would not recommend this to 99.9% .9 of you to do it this way. There's flat burners that you can get. Um, in my case, the convection top has got this display on it for the holidays. And I just tell you the truth, just too lazy to move it and put it on there. That pot will work on that stove, but this was more of a learning to make coffee when the power's out. That's an electric stove. So this is a camp cooktop. Um, with the pot on there, as you can see, it still has coffee in it, so gotta be careful. It's tall and I would have to say it's probably not the safest. Uh, using an open flame propane burner in the house is questionable. That means that you need to be aware of your surroundings and you need to be coherent, okay? No stumbling around, knocking crap over first thing in the morning. If that's you, this isn't for you. Keep, keep stepping. The next thing that you need to understand is this is boiling, okay? In that case, this is not the coffee cup for you, okay? Unless you like third degree burns an hour later, that is not the cup. I resorted back to this cup and it's funny, I love this cup, but it's only 10 ounces. I feel like when you put a pod in here and have to go from a 12 ounce setting to a 10, I'm not getting the bang for the buck that I should be. Um, this gets cold quickly with that. That stays drinkable out of that from the time you dispense it until the time you decide to drink it. Um, those two are probably a match. This and that are more of a match. And I started thinking about it. Hold on, I'm gonna take a sip. Um, 
Oh, yeah. And I drink my coffee uh, with just a, a, some cream in it, and I way more than I normally use. But anyways, um, this is the way it was done for years, okay? I believe it's coming back. These stoneware glasses or drinkware or the enamel cups are the way that they were match back then. And we've reinvented the wheel, reinvented the process so many times, I think we lost the basic connection. That type of cup heats up the body of the cup. That type of pot comes out boiling. That's a match. Okay? That one and that one. Um, I believe that the coffee has a better taste, a more even taste. It's not a punch in the throat in the beginning and bitter on the back end. I believe it's a more smooth coffee. And I personally prefer my coffee strong enough to float a horseshoe in. So if that's not there because I didn't put that much in. The other thing that you need to consider is that there's a cleanup. That whole thing needs to be cleaned up. I put a liner in there um, and cut a small hole so that it would fit over the stem and capture some of the grinds. Later today, I'm probably going to go over to our local fresh market and get some whole beans. And I'm either going to pick up a bean grinder or I'm just going to get them coarse, coarse ground. Um, so I don't have to use a filter because um, I personally don't like my coffee chunky. Um, so this is a go. This is a thumbs up. It works. It'll get you caffeinated. It'll get your head in the right way. That's a last ditch uh, method, but it does work. It's a camp cook stove, cooktop. You also boil water and fry cook stuff on it in a necessary environment. Uh, all in all, I'm pretty pr pleased and proud of the whole process. And one of my next videos is a uh, coffee pot I'm bidding on on eBay. It's 80 years old and uh, it's an electric percolator and it looks pretty cool. So uh, if I win the thing and it gets here and it works, uh, we'll do a little video on that. But these are the things I know. That's worked for years, it still works. It's great in a no power situation. Keurig also works. Is it efficient? I don't know. Is it cost effective? I don't know. Um, does it give you a cup of coffee that's drinkable? Absolutely. I would definitely push you to try a percolator, though. If you stuck through it through all this, I do appreciate your time. And please, caffeinate and don't choke nobody.